Hi everybody, this is Greg Tong with Darkconnect, and today we're going to show you the basics of setting up a group play round robin on the Darkconnect Digital Steel system. If you've previously set up round robins on our system, uh, we have uh, put in a number of important updates that you'll want to pay attention to. Let's get started. Uh, we're logged into our, uh, our bracket program here, and from here we're going to open up our event roster tool uh, to pick the players that are going to participate in our round robin. So um, what we're going to do here, the first thing you do is you pick the event uh, from the event list that you're going to be working with. And uh, we're going to be working with the round robin qualifier. And the source list that we're going to use is the master list. So we're going to be able to pick from everybody uh, that has checked into the tournament. Um, so we've picked our events, uh, picked our source list. And now we're going to set up um, a uh, round robin with, let's say, two groups of three. So we want six total players. So let's pick six players out of our player list here. And uh, you'll see you can confirm, confirm up here at the top in the yellow box that we have the six players we want. We can hide everyone we didn't pick. So we can uh, focus in on the group that we want to play in the round robin. So we take a look here. And if we are happy with this group of players, then we can hit the export player button. Uh, now we'll uh, get this confirmation message that tells us how many players we've sent to the bracket program. And from here, we're going to click this green button and proceed right to the bracket program to set up the group play. Um, okay, this is the beginning of the group play uh, wizard. So um, uh, the first thing we do is just confirm this is the event that we want to work with. And when we're ready, we click next. Um, here, we're going to tell it how many groups we want to create. Um, you can put different numbers in here to see what uh, kind of groups you're going to create. We want two, of course, so we're going to put the number two in there. And it tells us we're going to have two groups with three entrants each, with three matches per group. All right, so uh, let's uh, go next. And here you can also seed the players if you uh, want to. We're go uh, not going to do this part for the demonstration, so we'll click No Seeds for Me. Uh, the next step is to populate the group to... Uh, uh, pick the players that are going to play together in the groups for the group play. So we'll click Populate Groups. And from here, you can either do this manually by uh, selecting a space and group that you want to put a player in and then picking a player that you want to be in that group, uh, just like that. Uh, if you want to remove any players and change them, you just click on their names in the group container and uh, remove them. If we want the computer to just uh, randomly generate all of the groups for us, we can click Generate Groups Randomly, and it'll uh, put all the players into spots um, using a random generator. Uh, when we're happy with our groups, we click OK. And uh, here we can confirm uh, the groups that we set up. You can look at uh, the overall overview or individual groups. You can see the player list and the actual matches that are going to be played in that group. Uh, and when we're done here, we hit Complete, and it's going to take us directly to where we're going to run the round robin. The groups are saved. We click OK. And here, uh, this is the part where we start to set up our group play. We first have to put down board assignments. So we'll uh, kind of click Set Group Boards here. We have our two groups here. We can uh, put boards on individually by just clicking Add a Board and picking from our board list. So we'll put uh, Board 1 on Group A. And for Group B, we'll put Board 2. Uh, now, we do have a number of uh, features and options here on the left. Uh, have a practice tournament to play with, uh, you can uh, try all of these out. Um, there is a way to assign boards automatically by just clicking um, clicking here, and it'll automatically put whatever the available boards are for one, two, three, for however many groups you have. So when you have a practice, try those out. Um, we're just going to go forward with these um, two boards on these two groups. So we'll click OK. Uh, here you have the option to hide the group play results on Dark Connect TV. This is if you don't want the public or the players or anyone to be able to see the in-progress competition and who's got how many, um, who's in what rank and who's got how many wins um, uh, so that uh, that isn't known until the end of the competition. You can also toggle that on here in the tools menu under change event visibility. All right, uh, now uh, we're gonna uh, move on from here, click next. Uh, you can open a backup window uh, that'll give you a match list. Uh, we'll skip that part for this demonstration. And here you can uh, print the groups also. If you want to have a printout of all the matches, uh, you can print these out if you have a printer hooked up, or you can save it as a PDF to your computer uh, if you just want to have a reference to this or a backup in case you need to print this out later. Um, so we're going to cancel this and just uh, skip that for the demonstration and hit complete. All right, uh, now we have this uh, countdown timer. This is new. 
Um, and this is to make sure you don't uh, accidentally start recording results before the entire initialization process of the group play starting up um, finishes. Um, so I'm gonna pause it here and we'll come back when this timer is uh, done. All right, the timer is almost finished. Um, so um, as you see over here, I also have a version of the app and uh, we'll take a look over there of um, what the matches look like inside the app for group play as well. So, okay, the timer's over and now we can work with our event. Um, you can see here we have a list of participants uh, on these tabs all the way to the right here. We go to the participant list and you can swap a player out as long as no matches have been played yet. And you can also add players to a group such as if you got a last minute entrant and you want to just be able to stick them in. You've already you know, drawn your groups, but you want to add someone, you can do that here as well. And you can also access these tools up here in the tools menu, swap players and add player to group. Here you can see uh, the standings. These will come in um, as matches are played and the results get um, brought back into the bracket program. And here is where the results, the scores will actually be recorded. And uh, you can edit scores here as well by clicking on the scores there in this box and updating them. Um, okay, now we're gonna take a look inside the app and see what the group play uh, looks like here. So we uh, uh, go, log into the scoring app and enter our tournament. And we'll put in a board number for a board that we have matches on. Board um, one has group A matches. So we'll put in group one over here. And here you'll see a list of these matches. So this is Leighton Bennett and Sean Baker is the first match. Sean Brenneman and Sean Baker is the second match. So you can see how these correspond. So uh, let's go ahead and play out one of these uh, matches. Of course, for practice, we put in 101 so that uh, we can play very quick matches and we make them best of one legs as well, uh, just to make sure we can get through this quickly. So we'll pick Leighton Bennett as uh, the player that goes first. We'll just put in a couple of fake scores here. When you're doing your practice, you can either choose to um, you know, run through matches quickly in the app like this, or you can skip playing the matches and just put uh, scores in here and advance and winners manually inside there, just uh, so you can practice quicker. Um, so, all right, let's have Leighton Bennett win this leg on the third dart. We'll confirm that and we'll save this match. Of course, remember saving matches is what makes sure the result gets sent back uh, over the Wi-Fi to the bracket program. So we'll uh, take a look here um, at the uh, bracket room. You'll see in a moment the result pop up here in the corner when the um, tablet is sent back to the result. Here we go. So here we have the match result and uh, we can accept it and it'll update the score here. And if we go back to our master roster, which I also have up here on the right, you can see how um, you know we'll put it on our round robin qualifier, and for uh, round robins, you'll see that now the uh, event roster tool has the live results of the matches here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this uh, entire round robin out, um, and then I'll be back in just a moment to show you the next step. All right, we're back, and I've finished playing out all of the matches in the app. And uh, so uh, you'll see all of these results here from all the matches that got played. Um, now, when you're doing this uh, for real, a handy feature is using the autopilot here at the uh, bottom of the screen here. Um, so if you uh, are running the round robin, all you have to do is turn on the autopilot. And as it goes, um, and the matches are played in the app and uh, sent, results sent back here into the bracket program, you'll see how it's automatically updating all of the results. And uh, you don't have to do anything, basically. You can wait until all the matches have been played, turn on autopilot, and it'll take you all the way to the end of the competition. Um, I'm stopping the autopilot here so that I can show you what happens at the end of the group play session. So let's uh, pick um, and accept these final results here. So we've got uh, one more result. You can see here it's uh, got a progress bar. It tells me I've got two out of my three matches played. I got one left. You can see here on the right side of the screen, that um, you know, the results have been updated as we go. And uh, here I'll pick this final result. You can also, uh, you can see how here it's got another timer here that's gonna make sure that you give it enough time for uh, this on the right-hand side to update as well as DCTV before you mark the event complete. Marking the event complete is what's going to um, take us to the next phase of uh, finishing out the round robin. And uh, if you have a follow on knockout or a follow on um, round robin, uh, you know, that's what's going to close out this event and help you get to the next phase where you pick the players who emerge or advance out of the uh, initial group play stage to play in that next phase. So um, we'll pause again here and let this uh, timer go off. 
All right, the uh, timer has uh, gone up and now it uh, automatically takes us to the tool where we're gonna mark this event complete. Now pay attention over here on the right hand side, you'll see these breadcrumb trail here at the top of the uh, tool here that tells you the event status. And once we mark this event complete, you'll see this uh, now go into where we need to uh, approve the rankings, who's in first place, second place, third place of each group, uh, so that we can um, pick who we want to advance into the next one. So here uh, we're in the event status manager. We will click on the event we want to close um, or mark complete and the round robin qualifier will click OK. And this will go back to the main menu and you'll see over here uh, in a moment when it refreshes, it's going to show us uh, this screen here where it wants us to initiate the ranking for these round robin qualifier. So you have a number of um, options here. You can uh, do group leg win differential followed by head to head record, or you can just go by the head, uh, head to head record of the players, um, or you can manually uh, pick you know, who uh, is ranked first, second, third. Um, you can decide what you want to do with the ties. If you need to do a tiebreaker, offline, like have a three-way 501, which a lot of places do, or have some additional competition to decide who's actually gonna be ranked first or second in the group, um, then you can always go into here and manually select um, which uh, players are in which position. And that will help you get to the next phase, um, which is um, going to the, either a knockout or a follow-on round robin. So here, just for um, uh, demonstration purposes, we're gonna pick the more common option, which is option one. So when you click that, you'll see here that it gives us this ranking and it tells us based on our criteria of leg differential and head to head player record uh, to resolve any ties. This is who's in first, second and third place. Uh, we don't have any ties in here to take a look at to resolve. So if we uh, agree with how this looks, we can accept the results. Or if we don't agree with how this looks and want different people being in first place, second place, etc., we can cancel these rankings or do an override. Uh, if you do an override, you can then put in here manually first, second, or third and reorder these two groups any way you want. Um, or you can uh, hit the cancel rankings and have another chance to pick from the options. So again, uh, from the uh, there's more stuff here you can read. And again, when you have a practice event, I encourage you to take a closer look at these things. For demonstration purposes, we're just gonna go with option one and accept these results. Okay, so now we've uh, completed uh, the round robin and we have uh, the ranking positions of all of our players. And that's gonna determine uh, who goes um, into the next phase of the competition to actually win this event. Um, so we're gonna pick from our event list, the round robin knockout, which is um, what we're gonna be filling in with the players from the round robin group play segment. Um, so here we're gonna go um, set the source event. We're gonna set our qualifying event, which is the round robin qualifier. And here we're gonna get, uh, again, options here for how we want to set up the bracket for this part of the competition. We have mapped and automatic seated brackets. And what this does is it's like seeding in a regular singles bracket where let's say you have two groups, A and B, and you don't want the people who came in first place in A or B to meet each other until uh, the finals. They need to be in separate halves of the bracket. Um, so here you would pick which of those you want. You wanna pick the top uh, finishers or the top two finishers. You can do that. You can see how uh, clicking these selections changes who's been selected down here at the bottom. So we're gonna pick our top two finishers and we're gonna do a mapped bracket. You can also do a manual selection um, where you don't have, um, or if you don't wanna be able to do this, you can, uh, if you don't want people to be seated, you just want a completely random bracket. You can pick, uh, use these tools to automatically pick however many people you want out of the, uh, out of the finishing groups. The first place uh, finishers only, you can just do that first and second place finishers, first, second and third place finishers, you can click them all. Um, if you And if none of these things fit the way that you wanna uh, select who plays in the next phase of the competition, you can do a manual selection by clicking edit roster and then just hand picking who you want. So uh, this is um, how we've set it up so that this will work with anybody's method for how you get to your next phase uh, in a group play. Um, so if nothing works for you for the automatic, uh, versions, uh, then you can manually select. Uh, for our competition, we're going to pick the top two group finishers and do a mapped auto-seeded bracket. So we just click our top two 
uh, checkbox here. You can see it picks those top two players, A1 and B1, A2 and B2. And now we can go ahead and export the players. Um, now, uh, same as before, it's going to ask us if we want to go directly to the bracket program to generate that bracket. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And you'll see uh, it has you confirm your event details. Just make sure you're in the right event with the right players. And you can take a look at the player list if you want. And when you're done looking at that, click OK. And if everything meets your approval and you want to generate the bracket, you click OK. And again, we are setting up a seated uh, bracket. So it's already made that for us. It knows that's what we want. So we'll go ahead and generate this bracket and we can preview it and take a look if that's what we want. And uh, if it all looks good, we just save the event. And just like any other elimination bracket in Dark Knight Digital Steel, you'll go ahead and you'll put the board numbers down and you'll uh, uh, play the matches on the tablets and it'll send the results back as well. So that's it for setting up our group play round robin. There's uh, more aspects to it, depending on how you run your group plays uh, locally in your area. Um, and for that, you can um, you know, play around with the practice event. Uh, and also refer to the more detailed instructions uh, to see how we co might cover uh, some of the variations that you may do uh, that weren't shown in this video. Uh, that's it. Um, thanks a lot for your time. If you have questions, let us know. And again, uh, try out your practice events and um, you know, give this a shot. You'll see how easy it is and uh, how much uh, simpler it is to run around Robin and keep track of everything. Uh, thanks again for your support. This is Greg Tong with Dark Connect, and we'll see you soon.